Oh, this is uh, my PC that I'm going to be doing an upgrade on. It's my development uh, computer. Uh, it's uh, a mini ITX build with a uh, Ryzen 9 7950X in it. And today I'm going to be upgrading the processor to the Ryzen 9 9950X. Uh, the case is a Densium APU 4 litre case. And uh, in order to be able to get uh, something like a, a beast like a 7950X or not indeed a 9950X to work in such a small case, you need to run it in uh, eco mode. I use it 105 watt eco mode and it just about squeezes in so that you can uh, run all 16 cores in ADA 64, uh, just uh, under the 95 Celsius with the 7950X. You notice I've marked on the case, it's uh, the front of it. So when I put it back, I put it back the right way. And you also notice that I've put some tape around uh, where the fan is. And uh, that means that we don't have uh, air recirculating, hot air recirculating back inside the case or try to minimize that. So uh, with that aside, the motherboard in here is an Asus X670EI and uh, I bought that originally because it was the only motherboard, ITX motherboard, to support uh, three iGPU displays. Uh, however, uh, in the end, I uh, put in a, an NVIDIA T1000 uh, graphics card, which at the time, I'm not sure if it's still the case, but um, at the time it was the highest end discrete GPU that I could get within a reasonable power envelope and uh, also would support multiple displays. And the problem with the iGPU uh, was that uh, the driver kept crashing. And you'll notice that the, um, just showing you there, just by the fan is the 250 watt um, HDplex uh, GPU. And I'm just pointing out there, it's a T1000 uh, graphics card. And uh, the T1000 uh, is also half height uh, and single slot. So to get it into this case, that's, that's a prereq. And uh, also, uh, bearing in mind the uh, power supply is only 250 watts, uh, it needs to be a pretty low power power supply. Now, if you're running 105 watt eco mode, um, I've never had a problem with this uh, working with that, uh, with the... Uh, power supply cutting out or anything. However, if you don't set 105 watt eco mode, let it just do whatever it wants, uh, it will cut out. And uh, don't tell me, don't, don't ask me how I know this. So we've got the fan off. The fan is a Fantex uh, T30 120 millimeter fan. It's a set in advanced mode. And uh, it's just a little bit better than uh, your, the sort of standard Noctua uh 25 millimeter that everybody knows and loves um it also means that with together with the cooler which is an id cooling is 55 it just hits the top of the case so that that when i showed you earlier the top of the case um and uh, where i'd uh, sort of shielded it off with the uh, tape um that it's uh literally just hits that uh, the case at that point so we now got the cooler off and uh, there's a 7950x now at this point i'm thinking where's where's the um <laughs> what have we done with the uh, paste or whatever and there it is so you'll see that uh, this is actually a cryo sheet um and uh, I thought it was going to come off and stay on the processor, not on the cooler. So now I've got to figure out how to get the cryo sheet off, uh, which I've never had to do before. So I'm umming and ahhing and looking for a pair of tweezers and uh, realise that I can't find them. Uh, so instead I get a little one millimetre flathead screwdriver, uh, which happens to be close by. And try my luck with that. As luck would have it. Off it came, but you do have to be pretty careful with that. And there we go, I go and drop it and put it to one side. Now we've got to uh, 
remove the, the CPU, which is a matter of uh, lifting up that latch. But you'll also see I can't fully open up the latch to release the CPU because um, we've got the the, the coolers um, needs a we've got this bracket getting in the way of uh, of the latch um, or the latch lever. So I'm going to have to take that off as well. There she is. So I now get out the 9950X and um, and I align it in the same direction as the processor that's already in there, really to uh, make it easier to make sure I get it in the right way around. And then I and then I sort of have a bit of a a senior moment and realize, hang on a second, have I got this on the right way around, even though I'd already checked for that. So there we go, pop it in there and uh, close it down. And then I uh, get to and uh, decide that I'm going to put the cryo sheet on, on the processor. So that's the beauty of these cryo sheets, you can reuse them. As long as you're careful with them, I would imagine that if you inadvertently rip them, I'm looking for tweezers again for this cryo sheet, and it's uh, I'm fighting a losing battle, but I'd want to do this all in one take, so uh, I had to resort to using fingers. There it is. And at this point, I, re I get, a little, get a little bit gung-ho and start thinking, oh, I'm going to, going to put the cooler on, uh, forgetting that uh, you're probably screaming at this video now and saying, you haven't put the bracket back. You haven't put there, I realise oh, I haven't put the bracket on. So there we go. Put the bracket back on. So yes, when I chose this uh, motherboard, it um, the iGPU supported three displays, two via um, the USB-C connectors that run DisplayPort over USB-C, two displays that way, and one display over, I think it's HDMI, I can't remember if it's DisplayPort or HDMI, anyway. So I had three displays, and that was pretty much a prerequisite for my build, for my development. And... Um, uh, as I say, the problem was that the drivers of the iGPU, I spent about oh, six six months at least fighting with this thing and putting in new drivers. And sure enough, uh, but every day it would just it would just the drivers would just crash, and um, and every day I'd, have, I'd end up rebooting the machine. So not great uh, because also these. Um, uh, you know, while, I'm, while I'm screwing on this uh, cooler here, I'm doing one side and then the other side, one side and then the other side, uh, really to avoid uh, too much pressure on, on one side, give it a nice even um, pressure on the on the CPU, clear up a bit more gunk now. So, yeah, I, I bit the bullet and, uh, and got a, dis a discrete um, GPU, which is the I tried at first. I think it was a T400, um, and that did work. I think it only has three DisplayPort connectors, though. I can't remember it's two or three. Anyway, I then thought, well, let's go for the whole hog. Let's go for the T1000, and uh, uh, which is a 50 watt unit. I think the T400 is 35 watts or 25 watts. Anyway, I thought let's let's really push the boat out and go for a 50 watt uh, card, and I did, and it still works. And the um, Power supply does not cut out uh, when you run it on the eco mode, 105 watts. So here I am screwing the uh, the cooler back on. Making a bit of a mess. Um, getting this, the screws lined up. Actually, I thought getting the screws lined up on the cooler when I was putting that into the 
uh, back onto the motherboard. Well, I thought that was going to be hard, but I got it first time, which is unusual. Same cannot be said for getting the screws right on the on the cooler just here, though. I had a, <laughs> I've made a bit of a mess with that. So yeah, the, the, this main fan is that that's there's three fans in this uh, case. There's the main fan which I've just uh, put on, um, and then there's uh, the um, d uh, discrete GPU fan which you can see there. And um, inside the case uh, on the uh, ITX motherboard, there's also a fan on the VRMs. And here I am struggling to put the uh, mini display port in. And I think this has been a moment of truth. Is she going to do anything? Lights on. Fans going. You'll see there's um, a little device called the Hive, which comes with this X670EI Asus motherboard, which I'm just holding here. And it's in yellow. The yellow is the memory training. And uh, that takes about a minute or so. Now, something that's quite interesting since I put this 9950X in is that um, it used to be on the 7950X that the memory training used to take uh, at least a minute every time you booted up. So it, basically, it was time to go and make a coffee every single time you booted up. Now, uh, interestingly, since uh, I put this 9950X in, I've noticed that actually that it doesn't go through this really long uh, memory training cycle. Um, it uh, it seems to sort of only take a few seconds to to boot up now. So I don't know if that's a function of the. It's on, on red now. You'll see that is the it's testing the CPU white. That's testing the display, making sure that it's got uh, a display adapter or the iGPU connected. And you'll see it go green in a sec. There we go. It's gone green. And uh, that's completed the power. So you see the boot, the bar screen. Now at this point here, we had a great little problem because of TPM, and I couldn't remember whether or not we'd got um, BitLocker installed or not. So anyway, check you have BitLocker, whether you've got BitLocker installed or not, and also turn off TPM <laughs> before with the old processor in. Okay, now uh, we're going to look at some uh, benchmarks. Thanks for watching.